Well, Screamers, it's come down to the midway point of our 2018 Fright Tour, and I have finally accomplished a personal mission of mine that was set eight years ago when I first started this website. I have added this haunt to the tour three times, and three times it has been canceled due to weather or personal reasons. It is a haunt that is infamous. It is a name that is synonymous with the haunt industry. It has been deemed as the biggest, the baddest, the scariest, the most terrifying attraction out there in America. I am talking about none other, the one, the only, the Headless Horseman. This massive attraction is located in Ulster Park, New York. And for those of you who do not know anything about Headless Horseman, you need to do yourself a favor and get yourself out from underneath that rock. It is without a doubt one of the largest attractions, wait, scratch that, hold on, the largest attraction that Fright Tour has ever experienced. It's not home to one, it's not home to two or three different haunted houses. It is home to a whopping nine. Yes, you heard me right. No need to adjust the dial or turn up the volume. Nine different unique haunted houses. So for me and Rachel, when we began our two and a half hour journey, the energy that we had built up like a roller coaster hill. All that kinetic energy, including anxiety, nervousness, excitement, it just got the best of us. And while she was sitting passenger, and as we got closer, she began to read reviews off Google and from other websites. And of course, she wasn't giving me any tidbits or giving anything away, but she was letting me know what people were saying as regards to uh, how scary it was, how long it took them, etc. So we found out that we were going to be there for a while. It was going to take at least an hour and a half to two hours to walk through. And we also found out that uh, a family not only started out years ago back in 1995 visiting this place but also introduced their children so one generation started and then that generation introduced a whole new generation so it was quite inspiring to see the, the level of fandom there i couldn't wait it's been on my radar for eight years it's been on the tour three times and i've had to cancel it so i was on a personal mission this year i did not care if i had to go alone i don't care if i had to walk i don't i, I don't care i was going to headless horseman after grabbing our big gigantic green passes, it was time to begin the night with the hayride. And for those of you who have been following me for years, I, I'm going to say it again, you know that hayrides for me are more entertaining than anything. And I always go into a hayride looking at how much fun I have during it. So with this being no exception, I was just looking to have a good time. I wasn't thinking that it would be anything but. And to my surprise, for the first time, I was actually scared on a hayride. This was the scariest hayride I've ever been on. So you sit facing outwards uh, towards the sets and scenes and they're not far from you. They are really close, almost so close that the narrator kept mentioning to people to keep their legs down. Now, at first the narrator to me, I was like, oh great, another hayride with a narrator. It's gonna take away from everything that's going on. But you know what? I found myself focusing so much more on the sets and what was coming at me that the narrator kind of fell back and I didn't even notice it. I loved this hayride so much. If I still gave a Haunted Hayride of the Year award, this would this would win. This hayride was scary. It was dark. The scenes and the sets were like this close to you. So it gave the actors the perfect opportunity to pop out of the woods, pop out of the darkness little holes in the sets where they could come out screaming at you or banging on something. I loved it. In fact, my entire wagon, there were multiple places where screams took place. I love this. Uh, Rachel was holding onto my arm the entire time and I could tell that she was getting just as scared as I was. The opposite side to me, they, they were getting scares. It was kind of unique because they would get a scare and then we would get a scare. It felt very timed. It felt very organized. I loved it. I thought that I could have just done this by myself. I mean, that that's how good it was. For me to go on a hayride where I actually come off and I'm like, whoa, what the heck did I just experience? I was so happy with this. Most notably, the best scare on the entire thing was we went through this little building and the wagon kind of slows down. And as it slows down, all of a sudden these guys on like these wooden planks, I guess that are chained to the walls, just decide to slap down and kind of like diagonally over you. That scared the utter crap out of me. I almost leapt off of the hayride, which I wouldn't have went far because I would have ran right into a wall, but that's how great this hayride was. And the guy next to me kept saying that they had changed things. They had changed things. And I remember reading reviews and people saying that the hayride was just okay. I said to myself, 
what were these people experiencing? If there were major changes, then kudos to Headless Horseman. You've got it down pat. Don't change a single thing. But if those people didn't, if there were no changes and these people thought that this hayride wasn't that good, I want to say, what's up with that? After catching our breath from that wicked little hayride, it was time to begin our journey through the haunts of Headless Horseman. And the way they have it structured is you come off the hayride, you wait through a short line, you then take on Lunar Motel, Glutton's Diner and Slaughterhouse, Horseman's Tomb, Sideshow, The Greenhouse. And then you wait in another line and you take on The Feeding. And then you wait in another line and you take on the final attraction of the night, The Raven's Manor. Now, for me to keep this kind of organized, simple, short, and sweet, I think it's smart that I only talk about the ones that are more my favorite. Now, that's not to say that the other ones didn't do anything for me or that I didn't enjoy them. But if I dissected each attraction bit by bit, me and you guys would be here for a good 45 minutes to an hour. And I don't think you want to sit here and watch my mouth flap for that amount of time. So as we stood there waiting in line to enter Lunar Motel, my mind began to wander and I started to think to myself, how in the heck did they make a corn maze into a motel? Because from the front, it looked like a drab, dreary, and disgusting motel that you would find on the side of I-95 driving south. But then off in the distance, you saw corn. So I was like, did they just cut out a trail and plop up some wood and call it a motel? What's going on here? And then as soon as the door opened and we were pushed through the threshold and shoved into the main lobby, all of it came into view. And I immediately went into uh, a state of shock. I think my eyes put me into a state of shock. I went into complete overwhelming overload mode. Uh, this attraction was by far the creepiest attraction I have ever been in. It didn't need much. There weren't that many actors inside, but the lighting in connection with the dead bodies that were scattered throughout the attraction, uh, the set design and the layout, it was absolutely creepy. It is an attraction that still to this day, as I sit here and discuss it with you guys, it still is sitting with me in a completely uneasy way. I don't know why. Both me and Rachel immediately shut down. I became very quiet. I con concaved in on myself. She was having a panic attack in the back. There was this one part where you walked into a hotel room, a bedroom, and uh, there was a dead body on the corner of the bed, kind of uh, on the right side of it. And you walked around the bed to go through a door that was um, on the opposite side. And as you walked around, your eyes could not help but fixate on this dead body. You were waiting for it to come alive. The, the props looked so real, so lifelike, that I honestly thought they had went and killed a bunch of people and put them in their haunt. Um, but your eyes fixated on these, these, these static props, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in the perfect amount of shadow, something would happen. And it would scare the crap out of you. Most notably, the girl on the bed chained to the bed. Uh... Bravo to you because you almost made me pee my pants a little bit. You scared the crap out of me. This attraction was amazing. This attraction was a perfect way to start my journey through Headless Horseman Haunts. I uh, immediately thought, okay, yup, this place is legit. I'm about to get my uh, pants scared off of me. Uh, so let's continue talking about the rest of the attractions and we move on to Horseman's Tomb. So before you could even get to the Horseman's Tomb, you had to walk through this beautiful church and this gorgeous cemetery. I know it's really weird for someone to use those words when describing a haunt or even a cemetery, let alone. Um, eh, what the hell, I'll use them. They were absolutely beautiful. It was like an artistic masterpiece. The church, it felt like they had found a church, bought it, put it on a truck, brought it to the Headless Horseman site, and just plopped it down. That's how real it was. It looked so real. And then the cemetery looked like it had been there for years. Uh, to the left side, there were gigantic, massive tombs. To the right, there were these huge crypts with the ominous blue light that felt like moonlight. In between each crypt, you had a very thick layer of shadow. And of course, they could not help themselves Within that shadow was a, what I thought was a static prop. Of course, uh, one of those static props was not really static and it came to life and scared the crap out of me. Not once, but twice, because you make a U. So the actor is able to scare from one side and then pop over the other and scare you again. I thought that was really effective. Uh, for the first time, I actually encountered an actor who was playing an instrument. Yup, that, that is the level of dedication at this place. He wasn't pretending to play uh, with a soundtrack off in the distance. He was really playing the violin. 
He was playing Jaws, which normally the song doesn't creep me out, but given the violin was uh, broken and it was being played by a dead guy, uh, it was rather creepy. As the crescendo hit, me and Rachel were walking down a ramp into the depths of the horseman's tomb, and I thought it was such a dramatic way for both me and her to enter, because if you both know us, we're both very dramatic. Um, so I just kind of, I thought it was, it was a great way to end the tomb, and then I'm thinking, okay, wait a minute, it's not over. We're walking into the tomb. This is where the big scares, it's got to happen. And I walk in, and I'm thinking... All right, there's a, a hooded figure on a table, and then there's a hooded figure up against the wall. I'm like, one of them has to be real. One of them is going to pop up and scare the crap out of you, and nothing ever happened. I was waiting and waiting and waiting, and I think I actually slowed down to the point where Rachel was actually pushing me because she wanted to get out of the room. I wanted to stay and see what would happen. Maybe we were late. Maybe we were early. Maybe because we were only a group of two, the actor wasn't going to waste a good scare on us. I have no idea. I was waiting for something after that great masterpiece of a violin crescendo. Nothing came. It left me with a little bit of disappointment. But overall, Horseman's Tomb, to me, was probably the most visually appealing, most visually beautiful attraction I have ever seen. And that is what made it one of my favorites of the night. I loved every inch, every step of this place. I could actually probably plop a tent and sleep there and let the creepy dead guy play Jaws all night. I thought it was great. I loved it. Leaving the five attractions behind us, it was time to get in line for the feeding. And looking at the title, I kind of thought that we were about to walk through a typical zombie attraction. But then the words bloodthirsty came into view and bells immediately went off in my head and I got really super excited and grinned from ear to ear because who doesn't love a vampire haunt? Now, I don't know what happens to a person when you give them a pair of fangs and you tell them to act like a vampire. It could be the fact that there have been so many movies and TV shows that have immortalized them as sexually crazed, bloodthirsty animals. So it's really easy for people to portray them. But I felt like the feeding was on its own level. I felt like it was completely separate from the rest of Headless Horsemen. And the reason why is because of the level of intensity. Prior to the feeding, I kind of was a little nervous. I was wondering where the intensity to the scares were. I am not saying that the Headless Horseman was not scary. I am not saying that it was not worth the trip at all. It totally was, totally was scary. But I felt like inside the feeding, I found that level of chaos that I had been looking for. Leading up to the feeding, it felt very structured and very organized chaos. And I know that that might not make any sense to you, but it felt like a scare here and then a scare there and then a scare there. Whereas inside the feeding, it was uh, overwhelming to a point where I went into overload mode again. My eyes locked and I concaved in on myself. I began shuffling. We actually lost the group in front of us and it was just me and Rachel on our own, which definitely made it even more scarier. I think she might have had another small panic attack. Uh, but I definitely think that the actors in the rest of the attractions at Headless Horseman need to take notes from the guys in the feeding. They were so on point, so intense, so in your face. It definitely stuck with you on a totally different level. Kind of like how Lunar Motel stuck with you visually. This kind of stuck with you mentally because they messed with you. Uh, I loved the feeding. It was by far my favorite of the night. I wanted to experience it again and again and again. Most notably, the best parts of the feeding were the green tank room, the monkey room, and the mirror room. There were some really intense scares in there that made me hop, skip, and a jump and almost pee my pants. I loved it. For me, the feeding by far was the scariest haunt at Headless Horseman, aside from the hayride. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I think that if you love vampires and you love that intense chaotic scare it's definitely going to scare the crap out of you like it did me so after that you're probably wondering what i thought about headless horseman now year after year i read top lists from numerous websites claiming that headless horseman is the scariest attraction in all of america while i can can't concur on a national level i can definitely concur if you guys thought i was going to announce our 2018 fright of the year winner now you've got another thing coming you've got to wait till the 2018 fright tour ends but in all seriousness, Headless Horseman definitely deserves a top spot ranking. It is definitely uh, one of the scariest haunted attractions I have ever experienced. It's got 
the most terrifying hayride I have ever been on. It's got three joggernaut attractions, including Lunar Motel, The Feeding, and Horseman's Tomb. I love this place. I am not saying that the other five attractions did not tickle my fancy at all. They definitely did. They definitely had something unique about them. But these four stuck out to me. They were my most favorite of the night. I think that if you are in the Ulster Park area, the New York City area, North Jersey, even if you don't mind driving more than three hours away, get yourself to Headless Horseman. It is the epitome of Halloween. It is a brilliant, magnificent, in-your-face attraction that definitely lives up to the hype and the name. I am so happy that after eight years of waiting and three times of adding this place to my tour, I have finally got to experience the infamous and synonymous Headless Horseman. It was such a pleasure to see what uh, this place is about. Uh, nine attractions, people. That's crazy. And nine, all nine of them were on uh, a decent level. Those four were just uh, my favorite. But I'm sure everyone else has a different view, a different opinion. If you concur with me, if you disagree with me, I strongly suggest that you post below. I welcome it. I will reply to you. So post down in the comments below of what you thought and what was your favorite attractions of Headless Horseman. I love this place. It is definitely going to be on my top list, but you got to wait until 2019 to see where it falls. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I loved it. I, uh, thoroughly enjoyed myself. Rachel did too. She, I think she had two panic attacks. This place is definitely a scary one. Well, Screamers, this concludes our fifth review. That means we are at our midway point of the 2018 Fright Tour. We have five more locations to scream at. We will be heading into Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New York again. I cannot wait to see what these other locations have to offer. Uh, please make sure that you find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and our newsletter via our website. Until next time, guys, happy screaming.